Good afternoon. Welcome to Halftime Report. It's 12 noon. We're halfway through the trading session. I am Reema Tendulkar. With me is Nigel D'Souza. Well, we're down for the sixth day in a row. So as we speak, hovering around the 10,650 mark. Today, we've given up that 100-day moving average as well. And what a poor performance it's been when you compare it uh, to the rest of our uh, peers as well. So, for instance, this week, uh, the Nifty is down close to about 2.2%. The mid-caps have lost more than about 5%. But if you compare it with the rest of the Asian markets, you know, the Hong Kong market was flat this week. The Japanese markets, in fact, had gains of close to about a half a percent. The Chinese markets, despite the disappointment coming in from that CPI data, the Chinese markets have rallied about 3% so far this week. Well, the Korean markets and the Singaporean markets were under pressure, but the cuts that we're talking about were just about a half to one and a half percent for the week. So serious underperformance compared to our global peers, at least this week. And it's global risk off, as well as I think fears of a possible escalation at the border. Absolutely, Rima. You know, just look at the stocks that are falling from the broader markets as well. We've been talking about, you know, on Fridays we see stocks that uh, go lower. Today, just take a look at that. Some of those stocks, uh, they are quite large, though they're coming from the mid-cap space. You have stocks like Glenmark. That's down nearly around 8% as we speak. Uh, Page Industries, that as well, you know, trading at close to around 42 to 45 times odd. Ian Affair resuming a 20% EPS growth going ahead. That stock as well is now down close to around 7.5%. So a lot of those stocks are selling off. Even in Ashok Leyland yesterday, you're looking at it, well, you thought the numbers were not so, uh, so bad. In fact, the numbers look good. But a closer look at that, and that stock is well selling off as we speak. So not looking great at all. Uh, United Beauties as well. Uh, has moved to the low point of the day. So quite a lot of stocks in the mid-cap space as well, down between 5 to around 8% odd. The Nifty as well down close to around 100 points. First up, run stock uh, in focus on the back of the company acquiring Harita Seatings and Subsidies. To discuss this and more, we are joined by Sunil uh, Bora, the CFO of the company. Hi, Mr. Bora. Thanks so much, sir, for uh, joining in. Going through your presentation, you have mentioned that it will be EPS accretive uh, from the year one itself. So that's good news for your investors. Could you tell us all regulatory hurdles, they have been cleared? And by when does this merger take effect? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for this call. In terms of regulatory approvals, as we all know, that once the board has cleared the scheme yesterday, now uh, the regulatory approval process will start. There are quite a few regulatory approvals in, uh, as you know, that both entities are listed. There are two NCLTs involved. Uh, one is Delhi and another is uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, because Harita is based out of Chennai. So there will be approvals required from BAC, SEBI, uh, all the NCLTs, and also from the shareholders, uh, where the majority of minority vote will be required from the shareholders and creators, etc. So the entire process of all these uh, approvals will take uh, something around 9 to 10 months. 9 to 10 months. Uh, Mr. Bora, uh, afternoon and thanks so much for joining in. I understand you will be doing this via share swap. It could be regular shares or even preferential shares. But if you could just tell us what have you valued, valued Harita seating at? Yeah, so the roughly Harita has been valued at an enterprise value of around 400 crores and they have a debt of around 25 which leads to an uh, equity valuation of around 376 crores. And if you see the preference share swap, uh, which is offered, it will come roughly to 485 rupees per share for Harita shareholders. And if you backwork for Minda, it comes to around 220 rupees for Minda shareholders. Okay. So and the equity value is about 360. The market cap of Harita seating right now is about 300 crores on the exchanges. So just yeah. wanted to put that on board. Yeah, right. I think I was just going through the presentation and to Ms. Bora, I think you'll have mentioned the value per share is around 485 rupees per share for Harita seating. So let's pull up that stock. I think it's trading at around 400 rupees odd. But that's the management estimate in terms of, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the value that they're giving uh, to the company that they're acquiring. Uh, Ms. Bora, I wanted to ask you about, you have given two options. Option one and option two. Which one do you decide on? What are the parameters you're looking at? Because one is a direct share swap. The second one you're mentioning about a preference share, which has a yield of around 7.5%. Uh, give us some more details. Yeah. So in terms of, uh, as you see, that uh, the two options have been given. The In terms of opting for the options, that will be decided by the shareholders of Harita. Okay. Uh, we will not know what the options they will choose for, but what we know is, if they opt for 100% preference shares, mm. it will lead to a total cash outflow of 376 crore plus whatever the coupon yield of 7.5% is. Okay. Or if they opt for 100% equity, the dilution is roughly around 4.5%. Okay. Clear. So, um, once the two entities are merged on a consolidated basis, what would the revenues and margins look like? And what are the kind of synergies, cost synergies that you're looking to extract? Yeah. 
so in terms of uh, harita uh, they have currently uh, the turnover in excess of 1000 crores expected for uh, financial 18 and 19 and their margins uh, has been around uh, 9% uh, however uh, we have to see the asset turns uh, the asset turns is uh, more than 3 uh, compared to the industry uh, which is our side which is around 2 so that that's why the reason, while the margins may be little lower than our uh, average margin which has been in the range of 12 to 12 and a half percent the asset turns is significantly more than ours so at the bottom level it will lead to a better roc and roe for the shareholder Okay. okay, and just purely at the operating level, what will be the kind of margins? And you spoke about synergies in your press release. So after yeah. the synergies kick in, what do you think the targeted margins would look like? Yeah, so the current margins are nine percent. Uh, we are definitely targeting uh, to improve the margins. But before uh, that, we are also working uh, in discussion with uh, the technology partner uh, Ferrel, mm. who are uh, very strong in uh, PV car uh, seating in uh, Europe, mm. uh, whereas Harita is currently not present in that segment. so how do we bring in that segment in place plus on top of it harita being part of uh, a very strong professional management uh, driven by the tvs family mm. uh, we definitely would like to continue that uh, management but because it was attached to tvs i'm sure you will appreciate that uh, mm. we will be able to provide access to other 2em uh, two wheeler oems where we have very strong relationship with uh, hero or honda yeah. or such so we believe we will be able to provide a, a sort of immediate uh, I would say low improved in terms of the uh, new relationship and new customer addition. Okay. Uh, interesting point here you're making there. You said that you'll have, you know, Harita has a JV with uh, the German-based company, uh, Ferrer, I think so. Yeah. Um, yes, can yes. Minda access the technology that's available out there? Uh, is there a possibility out there? Yeah, that's right. That's what I was trying to elucidate. That we are already in discussion with uh, Ferrer. Okay. And uh, working to see that once this transaction gets consummated, okay. we have make a clear roadmap. How do we enter into the right. uh, for either segment? Right, Mr. Boda, you also made that point that ROC will improve. So, what is the current ROC of Minda Industries? And uh, you said yeah. it will improve because the asset turn is better. So, just give us a couple of details. We would have done some calculations, right? Yeah. So, current ROC for Minda is around twenty to twenty three percent. Okay. And uh, our asset turn is uh, roughly one point nine two. If I have to be precise, based okay. on the target numbers. Right. And uh, if we see Harita there at, at the equity value of three hundred fifty crores, their uh, asset turn is more than three. And ROC? You their said? ROC definitely is uh, more than twenty percent. How will you be funding this acquisition? So as of now, uh, if it goes it's, for a hundred percent share swap, obviously it's it is, a dilution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it's preference, then obviously we'll fund it through a mix of internal approvals and uh, some debt. Okay. All right. Uh, also, you all have been mentioning. You know, I was looking through your release. You're saying that it's strategic uh, location, so there'll be some cross-selling as well. Clearly, this deal is good for you guys because you all are not in the seating space, and I don't think you'll have much exposure to CV as well as uh, tractors. So it's giving you a new bi- business vertical to work with. Um, but if you could tell us cross-selling, uh, is there a possibility out there as well? Yeah, there is. There is a possibility. Uh, definitely, it will add a, a new product to our uh, city. Hmm. Uh, and we will be able to as i, as I said uh, cross sell in terms of uh, we do have a strong relationship with our existing oems mm. and we will work uh, now itself uh, till the closure of the deal yeah. in terms of selling uh, those uh, seats to our existing set of customers at the same time they also have uh, a customer base yeah. and they are very strong in uh, tractors and uh, cv so there we hope we will be able to get some uh, entry okay thank you Uh, Mr. Bora, for joining in, that's Minda Industry post the merger. You can expect their ROCE to improve because the acquired company Harita Seating has a higher asset turn. Let's move on to a CNBC TV18 exclusive. Banking sources tell us that the final bids for JP Infra are to be submitted today. Ritu Singh joins in with those exclusive details. Ritu. That's why right. the final round of bids for Jayaprakash Infratech or JP Infratech are likely to be placed today and the committee of creditors we understand from sources will be meeting on Monday the 18th of February to review all the bids that have been submitted for JP Infratech. Now do remember the expressions of interest have already been submitted by NBCC, Kotak Investments, Cube Highways as well as Suraksha Group and banking sources indicate that NBCC and Suraksha Group are seen as the strongest contenders to acquire JP Infratech. 
attack. Do remember in the last round, uh, you know, Suraksha had emerged as the highest bidder with its uh, with its bid of about 7,300 crore rupees. But that was subsequently rejected by the lenders for being too low. And the entire process of insolvency was restarted on the orders of the Supreme Court. Separately, the promoters of uh, J uh, JP Infotech, that is Jayaprakash Associates, had submitted close to 750 crore rupees with the Supreme Court at the time, which has now been transferred to NCLT on the Apex Court's order. Uh, remember, we're talking of a debt of 10,000 crore rupees, and therefore, this time around, it'll be interesting to see if Suraksha Group can once again emerge as the highest bidder, and if its bid will be higher than the last time around uh, when its bid was rejected.